All right. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to set this table up the way I've been doing it, moving this top around, because I can't, I can't pick that thing up and move it around like uh, maybe I could have done 10 years ago. <laughs> it's too heavy. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to set it up right here because i got to do a couple things to it that I'm going to show you real quick. And I'm going to start applying some finish later today. So maybe I will show you a little bit of that and talk about the process. But I'm not going to show you all the steps along the way of me finishing this out. And maybe there will be uh, a shot of it with finish on it at the end. Maybe not this video, but we'll see how it goes. So here's how it works. those of you who haven't been paying attention, um, can we get it in here? We'll do it this way. No, I'm going to have to do it this way. I don't know if this is going to work, but for those who haven't been paying attention, this is a trestle base. I can knock this base down. The only thing holding this base together are these uh, bolts that are in here. So I mortised into this post, or this beam rather, and I put these little plugs here, which if you had to, you could pry them out. They're not glued into place. I'm going to go ahead and put the little pad feet under here. I have to attach these to the base today as well. Uh, the, these, base, these two base ends here, these are the trestles, and uh, these are for four points of contact. This will also adjust your table height. Like right now, it's about 29 inches, and right now it's not rocking. It's pretty flat here, so that's good. And actually, before I do that, <laughs> I gotta see how much room I have here to do this. Oh boy! All right, let's see. We have to move it over closer to here. There's a process here, and that well, I can move the band saw if I have to. I think that's what I'm going to do. No point in watching all that. Alright, so the base is sitting here. It's on the four little pad feet. Which one of them I have upside down. Alright. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. putting this up high on here because if the tabletop is higher it's so wide I can get the bench I can still get the bench tight where I need to put it so I can still fit the car in here at the end of the day these are part of my glue up system when I'm doing uh, tabletops or anything else I said these are these are precisely the same height across. They're both the same height. I can rest all my boards on here and then I've got another piece that goes on the top with this plastic on it so I can put clamps in here to hold all my boards at the same level when I glue them up so they don't move. So I don't need to use biscuits. I used to use biscuits a lot. Don't need to do that anymore. This works out fine. The type on two glue is stronger than the wood itself. The wood will break before the glue joint breaks. So you don't really need biscuits for alignment anymore if you come up with a system like this. <laughs> so this is that that uh, folding table you guys saw me make this in another video a buddy of mine had the he found the hardware for me and I just made the top out of some plywood so you can already see what's gonna happen here
This floor in this garage is not flat, and there's cracks in it, so you can see I run into some issues here. You see it, you see what's happening. That's where I should have the Mike Z Design t shirt on. I didn't think about that. You can see the logo on the back. Yeah, the top is set into place. So, you guys remember it's pretty sturdy. I'd say this is a pretty tough table here. I'm about 200 pounds right now. That's a tough table now. Next step for this morning, what's in the box? What's in the mysterious, what's in the mysterious box? Right there, that's what's in there. My electric branding iron. Now, typically, hang on a second here. As per usual, we have gardeners just directly behind you so that's where all the background noise is coming from which makes my uh, videos uniquely interesting I guess we should thank them for this all right so this hole was here in this board and too much of it was kind of rotten so I had to put a Dutchman patch here and my client is very adamant she wants me to brand my logo right here on that Dutchman patch which I would normally not do. Normally I wouldn't put a brand right on the top. I'd consider putting it on the edge off to the side if that's thick enough. Definitely on the bottom. I'll definitely brand the base somewhere. So it takes about 20 minutes to heat up and then we'll do that and I'll show it to you. There's this mark right here from a piece of the, in here that dragged across there. Look at that. Now you can go on a 45 kind of, or an angle to the grain. What you want to do here, because this grain is going in an opposite direction than this, so you can kind of smooth everything at the same time. And I can come back with the grain a little. 
And I don't mind little scratch marks. We're going to see those through the finish. It's going to be okay because that's going to help our overall vibe at the end here. <clears throat> and again, I can adjust this to make this sharper. These appear to be scratches in the wood. They're not like deep scratches. It's just, we'll get rid of that with the sandpaper in a bit because this is much harder right here. So yeah, that's what you'll do. You just work over your surface. I'll do this to smooth out this transition between the plug and the board that the plug is in. I'm saying plug, but that's a Dutchman patch, right? And I'll do this all over the table and where there's a seam, like a kind of a crack, I'm gonna, where I can feel out my fingernail or my thumb, I'm gonna go ahead and dig that out a little bit more and create a gouge that I'm just gonna fill that with the finish. And then this is gonna get wax on it. So I'll have to dig that out a little bit, you'll see. I, I guess I'll show you some of that. <sighs> Let's do a test with this here to see. This thing's hot enough yet. You always want to test so you also know how much or how long to apply pressure with this. Okay. I'm trying to get the cord up off the ground. There we go. Now this surface here is pretty big, three, four, five. I'm gonna rotate this up here, I'm gonna rotate it up here, side to side. Make sure I get it. That's not bad. So we know we're hot enough now. We'll do one more, I'm gonna count silently here. <clears throat> There we go. So it's about six seconds flat, and then I lift it to all four points to uh, get me a relatively even burn. Give that a shot right now. Oh yeah, that's almost perfect. The loss from Los Angeles is a little bit light, but that's just how it works out sometimes with branding. It doesn't always come out super perfect, but that's pretty close. I'm gonna sand that so it'll look better, betterer. Let's give you guys a better look at that. I just went ahead and scraped that a little bit just to get some of the burn off. That looks pretty stinking good when the finish gets on it. This wood's pretty dark, so this uh, brand is not going to jump out at you like it is at the moment. But that's pretty cool. And I'll brand this thing probably on the inside of the uh, trestle. Yeah, maybe I'll just brand one of them. Maybe, but I don't know. I like the beam. I like the other side of the beam better, but I could see like if you wanted it to be seen, you could do dead center here. I tend to want to put it off to the corner usually where it's slightly less obtrusive. And again, um, this wood, trust me, you're about to see it later, but once the finish gets on, it darkens up so much that that brand doesn't jump out at you. You kind of have to go looking for it. Although here, <laughs> that's right, I wouldn't call that the center of the table, but that's there now. That's, <laughs> that's on there undeniable that is the mark of excellence the mike z design logo all right i wasn't going to do this but you know for you keep in mind i am not telling you to do anything the way you see me doing it here that camera looks totally crooked but i ain't changing it so I like this product. It's a mid-wax polyurethane, semi-gloss. This is the oil-based 
version. I gotta drive to Arizona or Nevada to get this stuff. I got a case of it here. This penetrates the wood. It's what makes it look the best. I am not a fan of waterborne finishes. They sit on top of the wood, they don't penetrate, and they don't give you that depth of the grain, okay? Now, I've done varnishes, I've done oils, I've done just waxes, I've tried every, I've, I've been doing this for, you know, nearly 40 years. So, Sam Maloof has a, a product that's very similar, it's a wipe on, and uh, tongue oils, all that stuff works, but this is great, it's a nice durable finish. Now, I have a particular technique that goes against what this says which is uh, I put on at least three coats without sanding between coats. The reason I do that is because um, the, uh, when you, if you put one coat on and you sand it, you sand the finish off. This can's about empty, so. Uh, so I like to get three coats because then when you do sand it, you end up, uh, you know, sanding a little bit, and you don't, you're not sanding all the finish off, okay? One of the things to keep in mind, I keep mentioning it throughout this whole series on this table, uh, we, I made this to look used already, so there's going to be some scratches in this finish, there's dents and dings and whatnot all over the surface, that was all intentional, okay? We're gonna see that here. You won't see that here on this video, but we'll see it at the end. Kind of pre, pre-aging it a little bit, that's all. And by the way, this, what I'm gonna to attempt to do here is um, reach underneath to coat the bottom. Because this is, you know, that, I don't know man, seven or eight inches up off that, the work surface underneath it. So I should be able to reach under there and coat that instead of flipping the table around and risk wrecking the uh, the finish on the top, right? Common sense. So I like to kind of work it in, as you see, but then I'll drag the rag across the surface with the in the direction of the grain, just for it makes me feel better. <laughs> I don't know that it matters. This stuff is self-leveling. Um, this first coat will, of course, uh, saturate into the wood pretty quick. I might be able to get a second coat on this today. It is already 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I went home. I recommend you watch Wonder Hussy. She did a video today. Uh, I just watched it at lunchtime, and it's when she was here last week. You guys might have saw my video. And, uh, you know, she came here, she showed off some of the furniture, and uh, I took her inside the house here. It was pretty cool. Wouldn't be a Mike Z design video without helicopters. All right, so. I'll drag this across, and then once I get the other side there, I'll drag the, the depth over the breadboard edges. And I might change my mind. I may decide to put some set screws in this. It seemed like it was rocking on me a hair. What I mean, and I mean just ever so slightly, the, uh, the uh, top. I mean, it's barely noticeable, but... It might bother me. It's it's fine. Uh, perfectly acceptable. And I'm talking about when it's on the leg assembly. This top, as we know, it was doing this drastically. I took 98% you know, of that out of there. Like I said, these breadboard edges were an engineering necessity. I, I just I thought you guys might dig on seeing this on film here or you know on camera, just applying the first coat. So you can kind of understand how rich this gets. It's going to richen up the more I put on it. And uh, it's cool, man. This polyurethane is really durable, too. Being a tabletop, I might get... 
I don't know, four coats on it, four or five coats. But what I like to do is I like to get this on and then I'll use a, uh, I should have had this out for you. You guys know me. So I'll use this uh, paste wax here, the Brie wax. I'll rub that on and I will uh, just a line on here. I want to erase. There we go. So I'll put this Brie wax on. As a matter of fact, I think this one might even be, uh, yeah, antique mahogany. So that's got some color to it. I might use that. I might use the clear. And then that gives me my final finish. And the beauty of that is you have to, you know, you basically wax on, wax off, right? So you rub that wax on and you buff it out. You know, I do it by hand. So um, it's going to give you some inconsistencies with a sheen but that's cool because that's what gives you a hand rubbed look the really cool thing about it is putting the wax over the polyurethane gives you like this extra layer of protection and waxing the piece of furniture is not so different from waxing your car you, you wax your car water gets on it and you see it beating that's what happens on this and so upkeep on this at your home is going to be you could do anything you get that pledge and it you could spray pledge on this and buff it out and you're golden. And uh, it's just real easy maintenance. Being solid wood, you can beat this up, ding it, dent it, whatever. No worries. Uh, you can chip it and you can sand it smooth and then you can just go in later and put more finish on it. It's really a utilitarian type of finish. So, uh, man. The helicopters, huh? I know I keep mentioning that. It annoys some of you, but I'll tell you, yesterday I didn't get to the shop. I was at my pad, which you'll see. In, by the way, you guys are curious about my apartment. Sarah shot me inside my apartment uh, last week. So you can see a little bit about my apartment there. And uh, yesterday when I was home, it was just helicopters and sirens all day. It was insane. This town is... I say it all the time, it's like a war zone. There's never nothing going on. It's like New York City used to be in the 80s when I used to hang out there. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. Anyhow, I like what's, what I'm seeing here. Because there was a few little scratches I didn't bother trying to uh, erase. And the finish got in there, and they're pronounced a little. I mean, you have to look for them, but that looks cool. Because the idea here is I wanted it to kind of look like something that was maybe older that has been around for a hundred years or 200 years and over that amount of time people have used it and beat it up and patched it repaired it and sanded it and that's exactly what i'm seeing that is exactly what i wanted to see here i've got to get some finish in here i've got to overdo the finish in this spot here so it kind of drips through and all this inside here gets coated so we'll see how that all ends up working out but um yeah, I got to be careful because I'll start dragging the finish. I really shouldn't touch that anymore. So that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and rub underneath, get the bottom coated, and then I got to take that leg assembly apart, put the pad feet on, sand those little parts, scrape them a little bit, and get the finish on those. And maybe you'll see those in this video as well. Those little scratches right there, I love the way that they pop when the finish got into it. You can see the flame right here in the grain. You get a couple more coats on that. It's going to look amazing when the sunlight hits it. I love it. So, you know, I'll explain things and talk about it as I'm doing it, but it's hard for other people to see it in their minds. I know exactly what's going to happen because, you know, I've been doing it. <laughs> I keep saying that. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time. So I know. I know what the outcome is going to be. Some streaks here that you're seeing just because it's a little heavier, that'll go away soon. 
but uh, yeah, it looks so cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't even mind if there's some pencil lines on this somewhere. I was I was trying to leave them, but I ended up I think scraping them or sanding them mostly out. These are really popping nicely. Now this purple heart, as nice it is, as it is right now, um, as this table, it, this table's going to get much darker over time, unless the sun's hitting it. Patricia, avoid this being in direct sunlight. It, with direct sunlight, it'll turn walnut more blonde, which is fine. It's still beautiful. But if you want it to rich it up darker, it's, it's just nice. And what will happen is the, the purple heart will be even more subtle. You'll still see it. It'll still pop. But I like it when it's more, more subtle on the walnut. All right, let me get on to this other stuff here. I'm tempted to just end the video, but let's see how far I get. All right, so I got, the, I got these all coated with one coat each. I got the top of the second coat, but I, eh, I probably shouldn't have done it because it's getting warm today, so it's a little streaky. It's okay. It should flatten out nicely. And uh, that's it. So I might come over here tomorrow and try to wipe another coat on. It's going to be one of those weird things. I'd like to wipe a coat on it and leave the car out and everything, leave the shop open, just let it sit for four hours or so and then come back and put everything away. And then maybe Monday morning come in here and sand everything and put a coat on and see how that works out for me. And then next week, like I said, i got to start another project. So that's it for now. I hope you guys got a kick out of this. And, uh, oh, at lunchtime, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but Sarah posted the video from last week. So that was pretty cool. Kind of funny. And uh, hopefully she'll come back through. I think she said she might. If I'm repeating this, I apologize. I might have said this earlier in the video. I don't remember what I've been doing. I'm a little lightheaded. You guys have a good day. Thanks again for being here. And for anybody who's new here because of Sarah's video, nice to meet you. Come back again. It's not all just woodworking. I'm, I'm all over the place. Be good to one another. I'll see you all in the next one.